What if simply looking at something could change it in ways you never imagined? Let me take you to a moment in my childhood that left a lasting impression on me. I was in my grandparents' garden, fascinated by a vibrant butterfly perched on a flower. As I approached, its colours seemed to shimmer in a way I hadn't noticed before. It fluttered its wings slightly, as though aware of my gaze, and then took off in a burst of motion. I remember feeling as if my attention had somehow triggered its flight. It wasn't until years later that I learned this wasn't just my imagination playing tricks on me. Scientists have discovered that the act of observing something, really observing, doesn't just feel like it changes the experience. It might actually alter the reality of what's being observed. Let's start small. Imagine flipping a coin. You toss it into the air, hear the metallic clink as it lands, and then glance down to see the result. Heads or tails, it feels random, doesn't it? A matter of chance. But imagine for a moment that the very act of looking at it could influence the outcome. It sounds like something out of science fiction, but in the strange and fascinating world of quantum mechanics, this isn't just an abstract idea. It's a fundamental truth. At the quantum level, the level of particles smaller than atoms, reality behaves in ways that defy common sense. Particles can exist in multiple states at once, a phenomenon known as superposition. It's only when we observe them or try to measure their state that they seem to decide on one reality. This is known as the observer effect, and it's one of the most mind-bending principles of quantum physics. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's weird, but what does it have to do with my everyday life? Hold that thought. We're going to come back to it. Before we dive deeper, let's ground this concept in something tangible. Imagine yourself standing in front of a row of dominoes, ready to push the first one over. The dominoes are perfectly aligned, but nothing happens until you take action. Observation, in a sense, is like that first push. Without it, the chain reaction doesn't start. The universe, it seems, is waiting for us to engage with it. But here's the thing, if this is true on the smallest scales of reality, could it also be true on the larger scales? Could it mean that the way we observe the world, the way we pay attention, shapes not just our perceptions, but the reality itself? And if so, what does that mean for how we live our lives? Let's dig deeper into this strange, fascinating idea. At the smallest scales of existence, particles like electrons and photons don't behave like the solid, predictable objects we're used to in everyday life. Instead, they exist in a state of maybe a hazy in-between where they're not one thing or another, but a combination of possibilities. Physicists call this state a superposition. Think of it like a coin that's spinning in the air, neither heads nor tails, but somehow both at once. Here's where it gets really weird. The moment we try to observe these particles to measure their position, their speed, or even their state, they seem to snap out of this haze of possibilities and choose one reality. It's as if the universe, at its most fundamental level, only becomes definite when we're paying attention to it. This is the essence of the observer effect. It suggests that observation isn't just passive, it's participatory. In some mysterious way, the act of observing influences what's being observed. Now let's pause for a moment to reflect on what this means. If observation can alter the state of a particle, could it mean that the universe, in a way, depends on us to exist in a definite state? It's a mind-boggling thought. Does reality need observers to fully happen? And if that's true, what does it say about our role in the grand scheme of things? I remember the first time I came across this idea. It felt like my entire understanding of reality had been turned upside down. Reality, I had always assumed, was something solid, objective and unchanging, 
something that existed independently of whether I was paying attention to it or not. But the observer effect suggests otherwise. It implies that reality might be more fluid, more responsive than we ever imagined. And then I started to wonder if observation changes reality on a quantum level, could it also have a ripple effect on our everyday lives? Think about it. Have you ever noticed how your mood seems to shift the way you experience the world? When you're in a bad mood, doesn't everything seem a little darker, a little more frustrating? But when you're feeling happy or grateful, the world seems brighter, more welcoming. Could it be that in a way we're shaping our reality through the way we observe it? Imagine walking into a room full of people. If you're focused on the flaws in the crowd, how someone is dressed, how another person is acting, you'll likely feel annoyed or judgmental. But if you walk in with the intention of finding something positive, maybe the warmth of a smile or the way someone laughs, you'll have a completely different experience. It's as if the world responds to the way you're looking at it. And this isn't just a feel-good idea. Science backs it up. Studies in psychology have shown that our focus and attention can literally change the way our brains process information. When you practice gratitude, for example, your brain starts to rewire itself to notice more of the positive aspects of life. In a way, your observation is creating a new version of reality, so could it be that the observer effect isn't just a phenomenon of the quantum world? Could it be a principle that applies to our entire existence? As I kept turning this idea over in my mind, something struck me. This isn't a new concept. Long before quantum mechanics, ancient philosophies were already exploring a remarkably similar idea. Take Maya, a concept from Hinduism and Buddhism. Maya is often translated as illusion, but it's much more nuanced than that. It suggests that the reality we experience isn't entirely objective or fixed. Instead, it's shaped by our perceptions, our thoughts, and even our consciousness. In essence, Maya implies that the world we see is as much a reflection of our inner state as it is a collection of external objects. Doesn't that sound eerily similar to the observer effect? While scientists approach the idea through experiments and equations, these ancient philosophies explored it through introspection and spiritual practices. Both, however, arrive at a strikingly similar conclusion. Reality isn't as solid or separate from us as it seems. This realization opened up a new perspective for me. What if the observer effect isn't just about subatomic particles or scientific experiments? What if it's a metaphor for something much bigger, something that touches every aspect of our lives? Think about your own experiences. Have you ever had one of those days where everything seems to go wrong? You wake up feeling irritable and suddenly the whole day feels like an uphill battle. Traffic is worse than usual. Your co-worker's harmless comment feels like a personal attack. Even your coffee doesn't taste as good as it usually does. But what's really changed? The world around you is the same as it was the day before. What's different is the way you're observing it. Now flip the script. Imagine waking up and choosing to focus on something you're grateful for. Maybe it's the warmth of your morning coffee or the fact that the sun is shining. Suddenly the day feels lighter. That same traffic jam becomes an opportunity to listen to your favorite song. Your co-worker's comment is just a passing remark, not worth dwelling on. The world hasn't changed, but your observation has, and with it, your experience of reality. This isn't just wishful thinking, it's the power of attention. When you choose to focus on something, whether it's positive or negative, you're essentially telling your brain, this is important. And your brain, in turn, starts filtering your experiences to match that focus. It's like shining a flashlight in a dark room. Wherever you point the beam, that's what you see. The rest fades into the background. Let's take this a step further. What if our thoughts and observations aren't just shaping our personal experiences, but the reality of the world itself? This might sound far-fetched, but it's worth considering. After all, 
if particles at the quantum level can be influenced by observation. Who's to say the same principle doesn't apply on a larger scale? What if the collective focus and attention of humanity are actively shaping the trajectory of our world? This idea is both exhilarating and a little terrifying. It suggests that we have more power than we realize, but it also comes with a responsibility. If our thoughts and observations are shaping reality, then what we choose to focus on matters more than we can imagine. Here's an example that brings this concept to life. Picture a glass of water that's half full. Some people will see it as half empty, others as half full. But what if our collective perception could actually influence the amount of water in the glass? It's a metaphor, of course, but it highlights a profound truth. The way we observe the world doesn't just reflect reality, it helps create it. So, what are we creating with our observations? Are we focusing on fear, division and scarcity? Or are we choosing to see possibilities, connections and abundance? The choice is ours and the implications are staggering. And so here we are, standing at the edge of a question that has no clear answer. Does the universe need us to notice it, for it to exist in a definitive state? Or are we just assigning meaning to what's always been there, unchanged and indifferent to our gaze? The truth is, we may never know, but maybe that's the point. What's undeniable is this. The act of observing, whether it's the smallest particle, a fleeting moment or even our own thoughts, feels like it matters. Not just intellectually, but emotionally, viscerally. When we observe something closely, it shifts. Or maybe we shift. Either way, something is undeniably different. Let's think about this in terms of something simple. Imagine you're sitting outside watching the world go by. At first, it all feels like background noise. The hum of distant traffic, the rustle of leaves, the chatter of passers-by. But then you focus on one detail. Maybe it's the way a single leaf twirls as it falls from a tree. Or the way sunlight catches the edge of a puddle, making it shimmer like liquid gold. That moment wasn't any less real before you noticed it, but something about your attention made it come alive. Or at least, it felt that way. Now let's bring it closer to home. Have you ever noticed how the dynamic between you and someone else changes when you truly pay attention to them? Not just listening to their words, but noticing their pauses, their gestures, the emotions beneath what they're saying. It's as if your attention creates a space where they feel seen, where something unspoken can emerge. Is that connection a kind of reality you've helped bring into existence? Or was it always there waiting for you to notice? And what about the moments we choose to ignore? The opportunities we pass by, the beauty we overlook, the emotions we suppress. What happens to them? Do they disappear or do they linger in some shadowy corner of reality, waiting for us to turn our gaze their way? There's something haunting about this idea. If observation shapes reality, or at least the way we experience it, then what does it mean for the things we don't observe? Are they less real? Less meaningful? Or are they simply waiting, suspended in their own state of possibility, until we decide to notice them? 2. This thought can be both liberating and overwhelming. On one hand, it suggests that there's an infinite richness to the world, a treasure trove of moments and details waiting to be discovered. On the other hand, it reminds us that we can't observe everything. Choices have to be made. Attention is finite. And with each thing we choose to focus on, there's something else we leave unseen. But maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe the beauty of observation lies in its limitations. The fact that we can't see everything forces us to choose what matters most to us. It's in choosing that we find meaning. Take, for example, the way we look at ourselves. Our thoughts are like a constant stream rushing past us, a mix of fleeting impulses and deep reflections. Most of the time we let them flow unnoticed. But when we pause and truly observe our own thoughts, something interesting happens. 
We notice patterns. We become aware of what's driving us, our fears, our desires, our hopes. In observing ourselves, we gain the power to change, to grow. Or at least, we feel like we do. But here's where the question gets even more tangled. Is that awareness a kind of reality? Or is it just another layer of the illusion, another trick of Maya, as ancient philosophies might suggest? The more we try to pin it down, the slipperier it becomes. And what about collective observation? Think about the way entire societies seem to shift their focus over time. One decade, it's innovation and progress. Another, it's tradition and nostalgia. What we, as a culture, choose to focus on shapes the world we build together. But is that shaping real, or are we just reinterpreting what's always been there? Again, the answer is elusive. Perhaps the most profound question is this. Does it even matter? Whether observation truly shapes reality, or whether it simply changes the way we see it, the effect feels the same. What we choose to notice transforms our experience of the world, and that transformation is undeniably real to us. So, what does that mean for how we live our lives? It's tempting to start assigning rules to say, pay attention to this, not that, or focus on the good, ignore the bad. But life is more complicated than that. Sometimes the things we'd rather not observe, the pain, the struggle, the uncertainty, are the very things we need to face. And sometimes, the most ordinary moments, the ones we're tempted to dismiss, hold a beauty we'd never expect. Maybe the best we can do is stay curious, to look, not just with our eyes, but with our hearts and minds open, to notice without demanding answers, to observe, not in search of control, but in search of understanding. And in that act of observing, we might find something unexpected, not an answer, but a question, not certainty, but wonder. Because the truth is, the more we look, the more there is to see. The universe, in all its mystery, seems to unfold endlessly before us, waiting, not for conclusions, but for attention. So, what will you notice today? What detail will you focus on? What part of the world, or yourself, will you choose to observe? And what might change, within you, or around you? Because of that choice, I can't tell you, maybe no one can, but isn't it fascinating to think about?